привет. Let's have a look at the dative case today. Um, dative case is when you give things to somebody. So this somebody will have to have uh, a certain ending. Uh, when you give something that's accusative to somebody, that's dative case. So let's have a look at the dative and actually it will be used in combination with accusative. So let's have a look at the verbs here. The first one is написать. Second one, купить. Third one, дать. Fourth, подарить. Fifth, показать. Sixth, послать. Well, obviously, it's a little bit harder to memorize them like this, but think about uh, the ones you already know, like дать, купить, написать. You've come across подарить, because дар is a gift. Then показать. Normally, you've heard me say покажи. And then послать, to send. This one you haven't really uh, used before. Now, let's move on to uh, the second part here. It's the questions that we use in the dative case. And they are кому, when you talk about people. So who did you give the present to? Who did you send it to? Кому, кому ты послал цветы? Who did you send the flowers to? So that's that kind of example. Чему is more like to what, and we're not going to have a look at this as such, actually, because it's not so popular. Now, let's move on to the actual endings. Let's start with the masculine nouns. Um, let me highlight it. Um, now, when you take a name like Ivan, you can see it ends in a consonant, N. All you need to do is add U. Now, in these two situations below, we've got either a soft sign or Y at the end. These are the tricky ones. When you, once you get that, get rid of the soft sign. So instead of Igor, you say Igoru, Igoru, Yuri, get rid of the Y, Ikratka, and say Yuri, you. So basically, for masculine nouns, all you get is U and U. Let's move on to the feminine nouns. Uh, now, feminine nouns, their words like papa, because it still ends in R, changes to pape. So, who are you giving it to? The answer can be pape, which means I'm giving it to my dad. Who are you giving it to? Mame. So, R gets dumped, and you get ye instead. It gets substituted. Jena, wife. Who are you giving it to? Jene. Maria. So, yeah, at the end, you see, it looks a bit different from R becomes Maria, and we turn it into Marie. So actually, ye, e, I mean, ye can sometimes sound like e because the stress doesn't fall in it, so papi sounds like papi, you know, like a doggy, papi, almost. Mami, like mommy in English. Genie. This one is genie because the stress is on ye. In this case, it's Maria, so the stress is on e. So Marie, Marie, still like e. Right. Let's move on to the neutral nouns. Neutral nouns are not supposed to be problematic because they are like masculine nouns. We have akno ending in o and prividenie, which is a ghost, ending in ye. If you remember, neutral nouns, they have o or ye at the end. So all you need to do is get rid of the last letter and substitute with u or u. Generally, if you have e ye at the end, you're going to have e u here when you change it to dative well anyway let's look at the next one the hold on i'm trying to operate this system these are plural nouns so for example words like друзья friends if you're giving something to your friends it's going to be друзьям so generally it's am or yam so parents родители get rid of the last letter родителям Yum. So it's either am or yum. Друзья, друзьям, родители, родителям, директора. That's the plural of directors. Директора, because sometimes nouns have a at the end, like look a, ya, e, e most commonly. The plural version will be директорам, директорам, дети, children, детям. Тети. This should have two dots really on top. Тетям. So we can add them actually. I think. Yeah. Oops. 
Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Pardon me. Never mind. Uh, have to somehow go back. All right. Um, um, so we got tioti, tiotiam, diadi, diadiam. So am, yam. That's the plural. So all you need to re remember is actually that uh, masculine nouns are similar to neutral nouns. This one is just ye, e, and the plural am and yam. Okay? So yes might be a lot to remember but we'll try right so let's have a look at my let's say timetable this thing is not moving as usual right we've got timetable for different days of the week which i can type here i'm not sure you remember these but let's put them here so this is panidelnik so monday panidelnik so you can say on Monday, I need to show, or I will show the house to an agent, a state agent. You say, uh, "Panidelnik, panidelnik, ya pakazu." This one, "pakazat." You can say, "Ya hachu pakazat." It doesn't matter. I want to show. "Ya hachu pakazat dom," and this this is a masculine now noun. So we're going back up here. Now, can you see that masculine ones will have u or u? So you'll have to say, Ya хочу показать дом агенту у, like Ivanu. So any masculine one will have u or u. So I want to show the house to an agent. Let's, um, let's have a look at this one here. So let's type that this is Tuesday. It's a bit on top of it. Uh, it's going to be вторник. Yeah, so you say, во вторник, во вторник я хочу послать подарок другу, другу, why другу, same as агенту, it's у, у, because it's masculine, so let's see, which words do we have in masculine, we have another one here, Алексей, so that's ye, masculine. Let's have a look quickly. What happens when we have y at the end? Here, we actually have y, y at the end changes to you. So, by definition, uh, Alexei will actually uh, be Alexei you. So, we have a verb here, pamoch, to help. Alexei you. Right, so that's our dative case. Now, let's finish off with um, the days of the week. So we had в понедельник, во вторник. Now, let's look at this one. This one is среда. So let's put it here. Среда. Среда. So you say в среду, в среду. This is accusative case, by the way, when you say в среду. With times, it's on Wednesday. В среду я, you can say, должен, I must, позвонить, call, я должен позвонить, that's for men, by the way, должен, I can help you here, hold on a minute, let's use the pen and write here, so, должен, this is for, for men, я должен, I must, yeah, I must, well, I have to, for a woman, yeah, let's put it like this, oh, sorry, I confused you probably with the D, dalżna, so then you use the infinitive after this, plus infinitive, that should be easy because uh, we have infinitives above here, pozwonić, pomoc, these are all infinitives, so for a man, Dolgen with a stress on uh, o, and for a woman, dolgena, I must. Yeah, so you can use all of these. Um, hold on, let me go back with dolgen. So, ya dolgena, because I'm a girl, ya dolgena, pazvanit, and then we have to change Daria. Now, that's a woman, Ivanovna, the son of Ivan or Ivan. That's also A, so you've got Ya and A. So let's have a look, see what we can get. Ooh, I'm moving everything around. Oops, dodgy. Um, right, let's uh, go back here. The feminine ones, sorry, the feminines, they have, uh, as you can see, Ye, 
and e. So let's go back. Let's have a look. So ya changes to e, a changes into ye. Let's go back down there. So um, we've got a name, Daria. Pardon me, Daria, ending in ya, and Ivanovna. Now. I will write it down for you here. Uh, let me just move this thing. So I need... Oh, я должна позвонить. Uh, and then I'm going to say Дарье Ивановне. So let me get the pen out. Uh, slightly smaller. So this is going to change into... Let's get red. Дарье Ивановне. Okay, that's going to change. And then... That's going to be в среду, в среду я должна, я должна позвонить Дарье Ивановне. So that's a female. Always find the female. This female, female ending, male, male. Think like this. So mostly, when do we know when to use this? It's uh, when we see or we want to use verbs that would indic indicate giving something or doing something for somebody. So like... Um, got uh, napisat to whom, kupit to buy, for whom you know to give to whom, to give as a gift to whom, to show whom and to send to whom, right? So kamu kamu kamu. This is gonna be the question here. Mostly kamu. Who you're gonna give it to? Now we get to uh, uh, Thursday, right? Thursday in Russian is if you remember, probably don't remember. Chitvirk. Think of chitiri like four. Uh, so in order to say on Thursday, you will say f f because when you put v and ch together, it's gonna sound much easier if you say f четверг. So on Thursday, so uh, in this example we see позвонить uh, and mama. So you know that позвонить is to call, yeah. To call mother, to call my mother. So on Thursday, I must call mom. Uh, so what do we do? If you say I must, do you remember what you need to say? For I must, if it's a girl, she says, Я должна, it's here. And then the infinitive, which is позвонить. Я должен, for a boy. So uh, let's go back to позвонить. Now, I'm going to write the ending. Can you guess what it is? If it's a woman, you can see above here there's ye and e. So, жена becomes жене. So, мама becomes маме. So, я должна позвонить маме. So, в четверг я должна позвонить маме. <clears throat> I'm doing a lot of talking here. <laughs> right, let's move to the next one. Friday is going to be пятница. So, пятни, пятница. On Friday, я должна купить газету. Now, for whom? Кому? Кому я должна купить газету? So, what do we do? Папе. Because it still uh, has uh, an ending that looks like a feminine ending. So, я должна купить газету папе. Когда? When? В пятницу. В пятницу. Okay, fair enough. Move on to the next one. We've got суббота. Суббота is Saturday. And here we get uh, a verb to help. Yeah. Um, so, we've got помочь with the stress on here. Помочь Алексей. Guess what it is? It's a man. So you have to get rid of the last one. Not Алексей, but Алексей you. The stress is here. Алексей you. В субботу я должна помочь Алексей you. On Saturday I must help Алексей. If it's a man speaking, я должен помочь Алексей you. So the focus is dative's really. We're not focusing on accusative so much. But obviously you need to say what you're doing or what you're buying for somebody normally. Um, so let's go to the next box. That's воскресенье. The, so that is Sunday. Воскресенье. Вас, 
Воскресенье. Воскресенье. So all you need to do in order to say on Sunday, say в воскресенье. But when you say it fast, for me, it becomes воскресенье. Воскресенье. So воскресенье я должна купить with the stress on e наручные рука if you remember is hand yeah so наручные the watch that goes on the hand наручные часы so the stress on часы I must buy sorry I must buy a watch for whom for my муж so кому 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 oops it's just moved кому I keep getting invites. Um, кому должна купить часы? What do you think? If it's a man, what kind of ending will we get? Well, this is kind of bothering me now. Uh, the ending is му жу, right? So all we do is we plus letter у at the end. Я должна купить наручные часы мужу. So you can watch the video a couple of times, obviously to get uh, the gist of it. Now we're going to the next. I think my children are playing downstairs. <laughs> Keep getting invitations. Oh, goodness gracious, how many do we get? What's this? So, um, right. Well, this is very distracting. Let's resume the recording. I've just switched off the notifications. Right, we've got a situation here where there's a girl and this girl has an iPhone. Telephone, yeah? Telephone with the stress on O. Телефон. So, we could say, uh, она купила телефон. So, кому? <laughs> Себе. She bought a phone for herself. Um, so, we can say, она купила себе, to herself, телефон. So, that's a potential sentence. Oh, God. The full stops are in the wrong place here. Она купила себе телефон. If you want, you can say, well, you can give another example. Um, for example, let me move this a bit. Она купила телефон. And now, кому? Маме. Yeah, маме. This is our dative. Oops. Just like себе. I'm going to highlight this in bigger letters. Себе. To herself. Телефон. In the second example, she bought the phone to her mo for her mother. Now, we've got another situation here. Matryoshka. So, when you go to Russia, you think, what, can I buy somebody? So, you say, um, when you come back to the UK, you say, Я купила матрешку. Now, матрешку is going to be accusative, because obviously, um, we... Uh, hold on a minute, let me just shift something. You... You buy something, right? That's accusative. For somebody is dative. Я купила... It could be тебе матрешку. So, our focus is... I'm oh, sorry. Is on тебе. But we can substitute тебе with any name. Sorry, where's the slash in the Russian version is a question. тебе. <laughs> it could be маме. It could be сыну. Yeah? To, for the son, сыну. So, that's how you get your examples here. Я купила тебе, маме, сыну, матрешку. Pardon me. Moving on to the pan. Сковородка. So, here's our сковородка. Uh, who bought the pan? For whom did she buy the pan? Or who did she buy the pan for? Uh, what we can do is... Let's try to ask a question. I'm just trying to get this going. Okay. Моя жена, pardon me, it's English now suddenly. Моя, моя жена купила мне, you can say no купила, подарила. Купила or uh, подарила. And now I'm looking for the slash. It's all gone <laughs> somewhere. Подарила. <laughs> Или купила, oh, p -p подарила uh, мне, and now, сковородку, сковородку, моя жена купила, or you can use, или подарила мне сковородку. So, the accusative is сковородку, but мне is what we need, мне is for me, 
yeah and that's why you can change it with um, other words other nouns like uh, mommy papi babushki dedushki so that's what we change when it comes to giving to somebody right right moving on to sviti uh we can let's say uh, come up with a name buddies like boris johnson buddies padaril mashe sviti Okay, so hold on a minute. Sviti. Yeah. Boris Padaril Masha Sviti. So Boris gifted Masha the flowers. Basically he gave her the flowers. Now let's move on to the Brilliantavaya Kalzo. Brilliant is diamond. In this case there are three. Brilliantavaya Kalzo. So let's just uh, write a sentence with this. So, мой муж подарил, he gave me, подарил мне бриллиантовое кольцо. Again, you see, there's a tendency to use мне, um, because obviously we normally talk about ourselves, right? So, that's where you change. Uh, God, where's the slash here? <laughs> it's gone. Ah, no, okay. Forget it. Мне, uh, ей, is for her. Well, that'd be frustrating, wouldn't it? Um, um, I don't know. You can think of who he gave the ring to. Maybe uh, daughter. That would be дочери. So that would be an interesting example. Дочери. Дочери is for the daughter. That's a bit of a weird word, but we'll come to that later. There are some nouns that look different. Right. So we get to samovar. So who bought samovar for whom? Kamu ti kupil samovar. Who did you buy the samovar for? So let's write the question. Kamu ti kupil samovar. Question. Kamu ti kupil samovar? And you can answer the way you want. Whoops, pardon me. Now we got next one is naruchnie chisi. So they go on your hand, so that's why ruka ruch, it's uh, the root for hand. Naruchnie chisi. Naruchnie chisi. Masha padarila pete. It's inanimate, so you don't change the chisi. Uh, it's actually accusative uh, when you use chisi. Um, this part is accusative case. Because it's inanimate, it doesn't change anything. So it stays the same as here. Uh, but piety is dative, so ye appears. Why? Because the original word uh, for Peter is uh, Piotr. Uh, or Peter. Let's say Peter, yeah? So I'm going to write... The original Petya ends in ya becomes Petya with ye. So uh, let's go quickly up there. What happens here? Woo! Going crazy. Right. Um, Ivan, Ivano, Igor, Igoru, Yuri, Yuriu. And why don't we add one more? Um, all we have to do is type, uh, oh, it doesn't go in here, obviously, because it is a man, but this is where we get the confusion, don't we? Hold on a minute. It's a woman, although it's not. So, Petya, in black, preferably. Petya, and then becomes P. let's do this color, Petya, ah! It swapped the color, okay. Or this, this one. Or blue. Okay, Peti. Um, right, if we go back. So, Masha подарила Peti наручные часы. Peti, Peti. Now, let's get to the chocolate cake. The best part of it. So, шоколадный торт. Шоколадный. So, this is а а а. And this is O. 
tort. There's only one sil- uh, stress on this word because there's one syllabus, syllable. Chocolatny tort. So what we say, um, I can say I need to buy a chocolate cake for my mom because it's her birthday. Yeah. Oops, it's blue. We don't like it. Let's go back to black. Yeah. Yeah, должна купить шоколадный торт маме. Точка. Точка из фулл стоп. Я, я должна купить шоколадный торт маме. Окей. Okay. Moving on to the next picture. We've got a, a картина, a painting. And so what shall we say for that? My husband bought me a painting. Well, again, it's going to be... Let's think of um, the name. Um, okay, let's say, let's do this. Мой директор купил... Well, Мари Ивановне картину. So, my director, my boss, bought bought, купил, Мария, for Maria Ivanovna, Maria Ivanovna, a painting, картину. Now, what we've got here is Marie Ivanovna, dative, yeah, case. And картину is what? So that's accusative case. Um, that's it, really. Uh, this is the past tense, купил, if you want to say it's a woman who bought it. It would be kupila, with a at the end, because it's a woman speaking, right? So there you go. Мой директор, мой директор купил Марии Ивановне картину for her birthday, на день рождения. But that's not as important. Now, next one. Woohoo! We've got открытка. Now the stress falls on ы, открытка. Let's make a sentence. Um, мой коллега прислал, sent me, мне открытку с днем рождения. That means with a birthday, literally. I can write it here. С днем рождения. So, we say, мой коллега, my colleague, прислал мне открытку с днем рождения. So, коллега, stresses on ye, прислал, sent, мне открытку с днем рождения. He sent me a birthday card. Alright, I think that's about it. Привет всем! Guess what we're going to study today? Back to the future! It's the future tense together with the dative case in Russian. And you might wonder what we call back to the future in Russian. It's in fact nazat v budushie. So budushie is the future and nazat is going backwards. And since we're on the topic of back to the future, we're going to start off with a very short extract i'm sorry to ruin your fun but it's very very short extract for the purposes of learning so let's have a look at this so let's look at the example from um the short video clip um i will read it to you try to translate this я покажу как все Работает. Я покажу, как все работает. So the translation is, I'll show you how it all works. I'll show, let's покажу, how it all, so все is all, works. Работает. That's present tense here. But I'll show, покажу. Um, right, so you might ask a question, how do we know, uh, because it looks like uh, present tense here, so how do we know it's present or future? Normally you can identify by the prefix in the word, so 
But here it's a bit tricky because показывать and показать, they, they both have pa at the front, but it works with most other verbs. So let's have a look at uh, я покажу. So I'm, I'll read it to you again. You write it in your notebooks. So we go покажу, покажу with a stress on у. Let's get to the next one. Ты покажешь with a stress on а. And the ending is yes. So it doesn't look too hard, does it? For now. Он, она покажет, yet, with a stress on а. Мы покажем, so you can hear ем, покажем. Вы, this is the yeti situation I always say. <laughs> Try to remember the you, the polite form of you is used with yeti. Okay, think of a yeti. Oh, I've just made a boo boo. It's not a yeti. Let's. <laughs> I'm thinking of a yeti and I'm writing it there. Of course, it's not. Ha ha. So, покажите with a yet. Покажите. Они покажут. Покажут with a stress on I again. So look, there's some kind of similarity here. U in the first person and U in the third person plural. You know, I've been thinking what I can do with you. And I thought, let's have a look at some verbs from the context of the film. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at these, um, the conjugation of the verbs that are used in the examples that I will provide to you in a second. So firstly, we'll conjugate them so it becomes easier. So let's have a look at the first one. Nighty, that means to find... So that's a perfective verb. All of these are perfective ones. So ninety. How do you say I will find? Right, you're right. You've got the first example right here, and we're going to spell it out. So ya nai do, I will find with the stress on the last syllable. Ti nai josh. This is the josh type of verb. Here we're gonna have yo again. Он, она найдет, so yot, найдет, and remember your is always stressed, so я найду, ты найдешь, он, она найдет, guess what's happening here, let me zoom it in for you, one second, so, мы найдем, the stress, Falls on your. We найдем. What about we? So it's a bit of a yeti situation, but uh, with the two dots. So yoti, no, rather than yeti. We найдете. We найдете. You'll find. And they will find. Они най. Do you know what it is? Have a look here. Ding, 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 ding. Very similar. Они найдут. The stress on u. It's a bit of a swoosh one. Hold on. Они найдут. So, once again, uh, let's read them. Я найду. Я найду. Ты найдешь. Найдешь. Он, она найдет. Мы найдем. Вы найдете. Найдете. Они найдут. Я найду. Они найдут. Okay, um, um, you think of some strategies how to make them stick, but I will show you some context, so hopefully that will help. And we're going to have a look at the next verb, помочь, to help. And remember, помочь is the perfective form for помогать. So, помочь. Right, let's see how that is conjugated. So, я помогу. So, ч changes into... G. Я помогу, just like могу, I can, you know. Um, so the infinitive of can or to be able to is much. So помочь here is almost like to be able to. Basically, um, there in that verb it changes to g as well in the first person. Um, so ты поможешь, ты поможешь. Ты мне поможешь? Are you going to help me? 
It's a yes situation. Go and eat something. Yes means eat in Russian. Он поможет. Yet. So let's put the stresses. Помогу. Поможешь. Поможет. What about the next one? Мы поможем. Мы поможем. Ем. What about you? Вы поможете. Yeti again. And... Dun, ta -da -dun, dun, dun, ta -da -dun. Они помогут. There you go. Similar again. So, я помогу тебе. I'll help you. А ты мне поможешь? Are you going to help me? So, you can... Um, if you raise the voice on the verb itself, you're going to get a question. Мы, мы поможем вам is a statement. А вы нам поможете? So, you see the intonation goes up. Вы нам поможете? That's clearly a question. Right, let's move on to the next verb now. Not to bore you to death. So the verb is to call. So, позвонить. The stress falls on it. Позвонить. You see the prefix here. The perfective verb, позвонить. And imperfective will just be звонить. That's how you can identify what's happening here. So you can start adding the endings here. Can you guess the first one? What do you think? It's going to be U or you? Actually, it will be you. Позвоню. Я тебе позвоню. This is one of those that is different here. Они позвонят. Okay? That's a bit different. Я позвоню, ты позвонишь. And why is that? Why is it different? Because it's the it verb. So, позвонишь. Now, some Russian people make a mistake and they say позвонишь. Yeah? That's not quite right. That's just from the south of Russia. So, obviously, uh, you'll be able to understand what they're saying, but you need to say more with a standard kind of Russian. Ты позвонишь. Он позвонит. So, that's going to be it. Позвонит with a stress on и. That's not и кратко. Мы позвоним. Again, stress is here. Вы. What happens here? Вы позвоните. So, я позвоню, ты позвонишь. Он позвонит, мы позвоним. Вы позвоните, они позвонят. And let's put the stress on this one. Позвоните. Right. So, if you want to ask a question, let's look at this one. Ты позвонишь. If it's a question... Ты позвонишь мне? О, он позвонит тебе? О, он позвонит мне? So that's how you identify questions from normal statements. A normal statement here will be Я ему позвоню. You drop the intonation. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Quickly, quickly. We've got things to cover today. Отправить. That means to send. Отправить. Отправить. With the stress here. Uh, the other verb is отправлять, отправлять. So, uh, this one is the perfective verb. If you wanted to study the other one, it will be отправлять. But that's not the focus of today's lesson. So, отправить. So, let's conjugate it. Я отправ... Is it... What is it? You or у? What do you think? Okay, I'll tell you, you. And if you've noticed, look, it's one of those situations where you add L. Отправить. Я отправлю. That L sneakily disappears in all the other ones. So, ты отпра... отправишь. Stress is here. Ты отправишь. Он. Guess what it is. Отправит. Мы отправим. Вы отправите. Они, guess what, отправят. Do you notice anything? Um, we just had a look at another verb, позвонить. It ends in it. And here we got another it. And so have a look at the first person. Я позвоню. Они позвонят. And я отправлю. Они отправят. You see what's happening? You see? Great. Ta-da! So there are patterns appearing here. 
Now, moving on to the next one. Попросить. That means to ask. Попросить. The stress falls on eat. Again, it's the eat verb. Now we've got another tricky thing here. Once you've got S in front of eat, um, we have the situation where there's SH in first person only, right? So let me get rid of this with an eraser. So what will we say if, if it's I will ask, I'll ask. Я папра, папрошу, папрошу. Then we get back to S again. Ты попросишь, попросишь. If you want to ask a question, ты попросишь его. See? Да, попрошу. Yes, I will ask. What about him? He will ask. Он попросит. It. Он попросит. How about us? Мы попросим. You can pause a video at any time, actually. So if I'm going too fast, you can just pause it. Мы попросим. So we will ask, how about you in plural or the polite version? Вы попросите? That's if it's a question. Вы попросите? Oh, вы попросите? You will ask. Next one is, they will ask. Они попросят. Они попросят. Sounds like поросят. <laughs> Piglets. All right. Uh, они попросят. Я попрошу. Ты попросишь. And он попросит. Мы попросим. Вы попросите. Они попросят. It sounds like вопрос, which is a question. Have a look at this. Вопрос. That's a question. And here, вопрос, it sounds kind of similar to me. Maybe you, you can remember it this way. Вопрос, вопрос, попрошу, попросишь. Okay, moving on to the next verb. Sorry, it's too many, but I'd like you to learn some. So, зайти. Зайти is to pop in, just for a short time, obviously, as the verb suggests in English. Um, so, the ending. Now, we split it here, right? And we've got a tricky thing here. The appearing everywhere, right? So, зайду. Ты зайдешь, он зайдет, мы зайдем, вы зайдете, и они зайдут. Right. Dun, 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 dun. It's the same. Ooh. So, if you want to ask a question, when will you pop in? So, what would you say? Когда? Ты зайдешь. What would you say if you uh, want to say, we are going to pop in in the evening? How do you say that? Мы зайдем вечером. That's it. Simples. Right. Moving on to the last verb here. Спасти. Спасти. So, спас. That would be uh, that'd be the root. So, я спасу. I will save. If you want to save you, it's like, я спасу тебя. Uh, ты спасёшь. We've got a lot of yosh today. Он спасёт. Мы. Any idea? I'm sure you have this idea. Спасём. Вы спасёте. И они Dun -dun -dun -dun. спасут. With a stress on ут. Я спасу тебя. <laughs> Он спасет меня. That's uh, what happens. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, obviously. Nobody needs to save me. And now we're moving on to the context. The context of the film. If you remember, there was Marty. There was Doc. And we're going to focus on just these two characters from the film. Uh, what you'll need to do is try to... Uh, Put the ending on the verb here and use the future tense. I will translate it for you underneath so you can have a go. So Doc is the name of the character 
Emerald Brown, I think. Doc. Uh, Doc. Nine. He will find plutonium for the time machine. Doc will find uh, plutonium for... Whoops. Pardon my spelling. What's going on today? Um, for the time machine. For the time machine. Machine and in Russian, dok nai. Can you say what it is? Dok nai jot plutoni plutoni. Here, the stress is here. Dla machine vremeni. Let's put the stress everywhere. Nai jot obviously stressed on you. Plutoni dla machine vremeni. Doc найдет плутоний для машины времени. So this is our plutonium in the picture. One is missing. Never mind. Okay, next next situation is here. So that, if you remember, the name of the car here or the time machine is, uh, what is it? DeLorean? Yeah, so the sentence read is Doc Pakaj. You tell me <laughs> what the ending is. Doc Pakaj. Marty, как работает машина времени? So, have you guessed the translation? Doc will show Marty how the time machine works. So, Doc will show. What's the ending now for will show? Do you remember? Покажет. Покажет. Doc покажет Marty. Doc will show Marty. How the time machine, машина времени, works. Here we go. Once again. Doc покажет Марти, как работает машина времени. Времени. Our next situation. Um, this is one of the pictures from the film. So... Doc will call Marty to ask him to pop in to him later on that evening or later on in the evening. This is, what I think, when he blew his stereo or his amplifier. This was the situation. So, Doc, how would you say will call? This is the will call. Позвонит. With eat at the end. Doc, позвонит Марти, чтобы in order to Попросить, to ask. So, in fact, both of these can be translated as to ask. Его, him, зайти. Do you remember what that means? Yep, to pop in. К нему. Actually, it, it means to him, uh, to pop in. Поздно вечером. Late, поздно. Late in the evening, вечером. Once again, Doc позвонит Марти, чтобы попросить его зайти к нему поздно вечером. So if I read it faster, it'll sound like this. Doc позвонит Марти, чтобы попросить его зайти к нему поздно вечером. It's more of a natural speed. I can do it faster if you want. Doc позвонит Марти, чтобы попросить его зайти к нему поздно вечером. You see what's happening? I mean, it's all totally jumbled. But this is how we like to speak very fast. And how about this situation? So this one is Marty Pamoj. Again, it's all third person singular. Marty will help Pamor. Yeah, okay, give up. Pamojet. Pamojet. Doku spastis. Does anybody remember spastis? Well, uh, we had something similar. Spasti. Now this one is a reflexive verb. This is the indicator. Um, spastis at terroristov. So what that means is to save himself from the terrorists. So if you remember this famous scene, he's trying to save him uh, from being shot. So Marty uh, поможет Doku spastis at terroristov. He'll just go back in time and tell him that he needs to wear a vest 
I mean, I'm not much of an expert on the film, but I did quite like it. Okay, so Marty поможет Доку спастись от террористов. And our next situation is, do you remember this moment in the film? Док отправит письмо Марти в будущее. Now, at the very beginning of this uh, lesson, uh, do you remember the intro? В будущее. What's the film called? Назад в будущее. Do you remember what that means? Будущее. I'm talking about this, these two. В будущее means into the future. So, док отправит письмо Марти в будущее. So, inside here there's a письмо, a letter. So, док will send, отправит, will send a letter to Marty. Um, so, кому... To whom? So that should be dative, but because it's a foreign name, it doesn't actually change. В будущее. Док отправит письмо Марти в будущее. Why am I using future today in all of this? Is actually, if you tell somebody about the film, uh, you can use the future tense and say, this is what will happen, and then it will happen, this will happen, da 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 da, -da. You just use the future. Um, future is quite simple, I think. It's just sometimes we have some irregularities, but I think you can cope eventually. It's just a, a matter of exposure to the language. Now we, we've we got to the final part, the practice part. Uh, you are going to listen to me, say a sentence, pause, and you can try and write down your answer. Okay, let's start this. So, слушаем, слушаем и пишем правильный ответ. So, that means let's listen and write the correct answer. I'm going to use the future tenses, obviously, for the purpose of the lesson. So, мы отправим ему подарок. Мы отправим ему подарок. Мы отправим ему подарок. Did you manage to write the word down? Отправим. I'm going to give you the answer now. От п ра вим. Мы отправим ему подарок. I recommend that you pause the video before I give you the answer. Next one. Номер два. Он поможет тебе построить дом. Он поможет тебе построить дом. He will help you build a house. Obviously, I'm giving a clue in English, but I still have to spell it correctly. Он поможет тебе построить дом. Он поможет тебе построить дом. Тебе. Next. Я позвоню ему в субботу. Я позвоню ему в субботу. Was that an ему or ему? What was that? Я позвоню ему в субботу. Позвоню ему в субботу. I'll call him on Saturday. Номер четыре. Боря сказал, что он отправит тебе посылку завтра. Боря сказал... Боря сказал, что он отправит тебе посылку завтра. What's the word? Боря сказал, что он отправит тебе посылку завтра. I'll write it for you now. От. Упс. Про. Вид. Отправит. Боря сказал, что он отправит тебе посылку завтра. He will send it to you tomorrow. He will send the parcel to you tomorrow. I mean, obviously, Boris said Boris. That's my dad's name. Anyway, we get to the next point. Я позвоню Вильяму и отменю ужин. I'll call William. Well, William, I'm kind of saying it the Russian way. Uh, я позвоню Вильяму, I'll call William and cancel the dinner. The dinner. Um, 
Я позвоню Вильяму и отменю ужин. Я позвоню Вильяму и отменю ужин. So, позвоню. Позвоню. Вильяму. Вильяму. И отменю. This word means cancel. Will cancel. Дина. Ужин. Шесть. Номер шесть. Я бла-бла-бла. Это телефон обратно. Он сломан. Maybe you can guess what that means. I'll tell you the rest. I, this phone, back. It's broken. So, what do you think? Я отправлю этот телефон обратно. Я отправлю этот телефон обратно. Я отправлю этот телефон обратно. Он сломан. Отправлю. Don't forget the L. Я отправлю этот телефон обратно. Он сломан. So basically, the phone arrived broken. Impossible. Right, next example. Номер семь. Я, упс, something just happened. Я, бла-бла-бла, его за мной заехать в пятницу в шесть вечера. This means, basically, я попрошу его за мной заехать. Я попрошу его, я попрошу его за мной заехать в пятницу в шесть вечера. Я попрошу его... Can you hear попрошу? Попрошу. Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> Why is that not the right answer? So you see, it sounds like попрошу. But if we go back to our conjugation, woo, something's moving here. Hold on a minute. Here. Я попрошу. Now, how was it spelled? With о, oh. so я попрошу. Let's go back. Я попрошу. This is what happens when you get carried away. <laughs> so я попрошу его за мной заехать в пятницу в шесть вечера. So can you remember? Попрошу. So I'm just making a point. Quite often you hear a, ah, so you don't need to write a. Ah, it's o. Oh. So paprashu, look paprashu, just like malako. So ya paprashu, you was a yechet zamnoi. You can change the word order here. Zayechet zamnoi, u zamnoi zayechet v pietnicu. Numero vosim. Numero vosim. Ani. Нам позвонят завтра. Они нам позвонят завтра. Они нам позвонят завтра. They will call us tomorrow. Они нам позвонят завтра. Позвонят завтра. Они нам позвонят завтра. Так, номер девять. Номер девять. Nine. Можно вас попросить не давать ему... Мой номер телефона. Можно вас попросить? Can I ask you not to give my number to him? Можно вас попросить не давать ему мой номер телефона? Ему. Ему. That's right. Ему. Можно вас попросить? Попросить не давать. May I ask you not to give him my phone number? Номер десять. Когда он за тобой зайдет, я помогу тебе выбрать платье. Когда, when, он, he, за тобой, for you, зайдет, when will he pop in, right? Когда он за тобой зайдет, я помогу тебе выбрать платье. I will help you choose a dress. Когда он за тобой зайдет, зайдет, зайдет. Я помогу тебе 
выбрать платье. Помогу, помогу. Future tense will help. Am I going too fast? Hopefully not. Hopefully you get some of this. So, номер одиннадцать. Я не подготовилась к экзамену. I haven't prepared for the exam. Я не подготовилась к экзамену. Помоги мне. Помоги мне. Help me. Помоги мне. Hopefully you heard that. I think that's pretty easy. Next one. Двенадцать. Twelve. Двенадцать. Мы попросим его зайти вечером. Мы попросим его зайти вечером. Зайти вечером. Pop in in the evening. Мы попросим его зайти вечером. Who can remember? Вопрос, 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 question. Yeah? We'll ask him. Мы попросим его зайти вечером. Попросим. Попросим. Мы попросим его зайти вечером. Номер тринадцать. Thirteen. Он его спасет. Он отличный хирург. Он его спасет. Он отличный хирург. Он его спасет. He's an excellent surgeon. In the second part, right? He's an excellent surgeon. He will save him. Он его спасет. 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 He will save him. Отличный means excellent. Отличный. Here's the word. Um, отличный. Хирург. Surgeon. Хирург. Okay. And the last activity where you will have to ask a question to the sentences. Let me just move it. So the first one is the example. Um, let's have a look at the first one. So you need to put a question or make a question for the highlighted words. So, поставьте вопрос, make a question, к выделенным словам, to the highlighted words. So, let's look at the first one. Первый вариант. Аня дала словарь мужу. So, Anna gave a dictionary to her husband. Аня дала словарь мужу. And the question you can ask for this word is кому Аня дала словарь. So, the answer will be мужу. Кому Аня дала словарь? So, I'm going to make slight pauses in between. Right, let's um, move this up so that you can see. So, номер два. Брат купил тетради брату Антону. So, one brother bought uh exercise books for another brother so brat kupil titradi bratu antonu so bratu is the dative so you need to ask what question who did he buy them for right try it so i will write it underneath Can you read it? Кому он купил тетради? Who did he buy um, the exercise books for? Okay. Номер три. Ваня помогает бабушке. Ваня помогает бабушке. The question is, obviously, кому, right? Кому помогает Ваня. The answer. Бабушки. Кому помогает Ваня? The next one. There's your answer. Другу. To a friend. So, Лена пишет письмо другу. Лена is writing a letter to a friend. So, the question will start again with кому. Because these are people, aren't they? So, кому пишет Лена. Who is she writing to? Who is Lena writing to? Simple, right? So if you see any name or any person, it's going to be Kamu. So next you try. Masha dala dingi pashe. Masha gave money to Pasha. So Masha dala dingi pashe. Again, we start with 
кому. Next. Дала. Gave. Money. Деньги. Who? Маша. Again. Кому дала деньги Маша. Moving on to the next one. Let me adjust it first. We've got 7 to 10. Hold on a minute. Very tricky, this system. Павел отправил учительнице домашнюю работу. Павел is Paul. Отправил, if you remember that's sent, учительнице to a teacher домашнюю работу. We're just practicing question asking, right? Oh, God, I've forgotten six. Great. Okay, let's do seven first. Павел отправил учительнице домашнюю работу. Question time. Кому Павел отправил and then homework. Who did you send homework? I'm just going to put HW, just not going to fit in. Домашнюю работу. And sorry about this, we're going back to six. Света купила, Света купила Юле самовар в подарок. So that means Света bought Юля, or for Юля, a samovar as a present. So as a present will be в подарок. Just remember this, в подарок. So the question will be, кому? And then we start with Света, right? Света купила самовар. You can say в подарок, if you want to. Кому Света купила самовар? So, if it's a person, just put кому. And the answer will always have to be in the dative, as you can see. Юли, учительница, Паша, тети, anybody. So, now eight. We haven't missed anything, have we? So, Samira вернула Sergi тете. So, that means Samira has returned earrings to her auntie. So, I don't know which earrings, but Sergi. Um, right. So, the question is about the auntie, right? So, who did she return the earrings to? So, Kamu. Samira Vernula <gasps> Not Dingy. Whoops. Sergi. That happens. Sergi. Kamu Samira Vernula Sergi. And the answer is Tioti. So you don't say Tiotia in the nominative, you say Tioti. Stative. Number David. Bear with me, it's not much time left. Mama купила дочери новое платье. Mama купила дочери новое платье. So the mother bought her daughter a new dress. So we have to ask a question to for whom? Yeah, who for? So, кому again? So boring, isn't it? Кому мама купила? Chimadan. Ha ha. I was just <laughs> checking if you were paying any attention. Chimadan is a suitcase. It's nothing to do with the suitcase. I was kidding. So, how do we end this? Kamu mama kupila novaya platya. Pravilna. So, novaya platya. So, sometimes I like to, to joke. Sorry. Just to see if you're paying attention. Doch kupila matiri navagodni padarak. This is number 10. The last one. Дочь купила матери. The question is, who bought who what? So, the daughter has bought her mother a New Year present. So, since it's матери, that's the special form, матери and дочери, these two, they have a special form in the dative. Um, how do you ask the question again? Кому? And then start from the beginning. Дочь купила 
just omit матери, новогодний подарок. So literally, you're just gonna be starting from here. Кому дочь купила новогодний подарок? Finito. And the answer is матери. It's quite simple. Кому дочь купила новогодний подарок? And that's the end of it. So, back to the future. Bye-bye, everyone. Пока всем.